So, 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 I have a special build for you guys today. It has a lot of death, but basically it's going to allow you to spam your runic attacks every 5 seconds if you're lucky, and every 7 to 10 seconds if you're not so lucky. But every 10 seconds is still busted in a lot of ways, but because the game allows you to get even more creative, I had to get that build to the next level by, by making it so that we deal even more damage whenever our weapon is awaken whenever we use triangle with any weapon we have and on top of that to bring it even higher on the scale of top tier we're going to use a bifrost stone which if you if you don't know bifrost in this game is so it's so busted that we have to you we had to use it so there is a lot going on with this build to make it work properly, but don't you worry, I got your back, I'm going to explain everything. But more importantly, I'm happy with the fact that we can make builds which are relevant no matter what. Because yeah, some other builds may appear on the surface to be really good, but <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to say that every build in this game is going to be good, depending on how exactly you want to make it work. With that said, don't forget to drop a like, to subscribe, to support the channel, and let's actually dive into the build. There is no way I'm going to pronounce the name of that armor chest properly, but here goes nothing. We're going to use Gyptomat's breastplate <laughs> because it gives us the ability to get 70% of our cooldown when we use a relic attack or relic. And that alone is busted. That alone is top tier, but on top of that, we're going to use a spiritual set because any melee attack has a low chance to restore some cooldown up to 20%. That is insane. I, I, words can explain how busted that is, being able to get so much cooldown so fast. And of course, I changed the appearance of my set because I didn't like the bulky look on my armors and whatnot. So, but it should look something like this but in, in blue, white or blue, something like that. When it comes to the enchantments we're going to use, I went for Asgard and Midgard mostly, because one allows us to increase the damage on every triangle attack, every single one of them based on our cooldown, and the, 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 the ones for Midgard allows us to increase the damage of all our thrown, I mean our range attacks, which we're also going to use. But the most important thing is this, the seal of runic stone, because it allows us to summon a storm, a storm of Bifrost every time we use uh, three different rank attacks from three different weapons in a quick succession. It says quick, but you actually, I think you have six seconds between each attack, so you have plenty of time, and Bifrost is very strong. And I threw in some Jotunheim <laughs> enchantment because, the, well, I had some spare space. When it comes to our actual skills, every single skill which involves the triangle button is going to be empowered which is good and when it comes to the axe anytime we awaken the axe we're going to deal even more damage and it's going to also translate when we use the blades or the spear the problem is when it comes to the axe and the blades you're going to deal just <laughs> a significant amount of damage but when it comes to the spear unfortunately the only way to use triangle with the spear is to detonate your spears, the spears you've thrown. And it's unfortunate because you have so many other uses when you use the axe and blades, but not so much with this build when you use the spear. And listen, Freya is not very important for this build to work, so you can give her whatever you feel comfortable giving her. I do prefer using poison as her ring summon because poison is really, really strong in this game and Bifrost on her sword because poison Bifrost is a lethal combination. When it comes to the grip for the axe, I use the fortified frost knob. And again, it's all about the triangle and being able to get some benefit from awakening our weapon. And, but you can also use this, the grip of the nine rams, whenever you activate your. You're going to create a ram shift anytime you activate your 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 permafrost. And then when it comes to our runic attacks, well, you can see for yourself. I love the I love the row. And when it comes to the grip for the blades, I use this one, which is also going to take advantage of us mashing triangle to um, to use a flame whiplash. I just love this attack. It deals so much damage, and as of course you can see, the runic attacks I'm using 
and you can pay attention to the cooldown just pay attention to the cooldown on my running attacks and you're going to see that yeah <laughs> the cooldown is almost it's already good but we're going to take it to the next level and when it comes to the spear same thing we just get a buff anytime you use triangle and you don't have to use the same attacks i use you can go with whatever works for you and when it comes to the shield of course i'm using the dauntless shield with the round of obliteration because we need to get that running stat up to 170 so whatever you do you do other than you know making the choosing the set for the chest and waist and waist armor you need to make that running stat all the way to 170 if you want to use the bifrost thumb very important also rocking the wrath rage and as for our relic you can go with um with this it's really good if you want to because the cooldown is so low but personally i prefer the heat of scoffnan because <laughs> that thing is crazy it's the craziest relic and i just love how you can lock people down because people lock, love running a lot in this game so having the, the ability to pin them down is great when it comes to the storm you don't even need to your attacks to connect for the storm to be summoned it's going to follow you around forming some kind of field and whoever steps into the field is going to be affected by bifrost and that thing deals damage i used the, the storm to defeat the valkyrie queen Na in less than two minutes which is insane the storm is really good don't sleep on it but now i'm going to actually give you tips about the combat and how to mostly awaken our weapon faster so firstly, when it comes to the axe, the problem with awakening your axe is so it breaks the flow of combat where you have to wait and hold triangle or just pause for you to then trigger the awakening. So the best way, in my opinion, to awaken your axe is to throw it and then recall it while you press, while you hold triangle. And if you don't know in the game, there is precision throw. And whenever you throw your axe and recall it, the moment it hits the opponent, you, really, you can even hear a little cling. It's like you know that it hit the, the opponent. And then when you recall, it's going to come back faster than if you just threw it and recalled it. And because that's the case, you can then throw your axe and call it back. You can then throw your axe and call it back. And the moment it, call, it comes back, you awaken it, you use your attack, you do maybe you hit your the opponent maybe once or twice and then you throw it again precision throw call it back and i can tell you it it, look, it looks even flashier when you get the hang the hang of it and it doesn't break the flow of combat because you don't have to wait a whole steal and it's like half a second when you do record it back so definitely get the hang of it is going to be so useful and sometimes when you do it properly you're not even going to tell when the axe came back into my hands that's how amazing it is it just, it just happens and it's just there and it's awakened good and do keep in mind that we get a buff in the damage we make whenever we use a range attack and that's it for the axe when it comes to the blaze those things deal disgusting damage and mind you the whole time we are doing that our cooldown in the background is getting refreshed it is crazy so when it comes to the blade we need to you we need to use flame whiplash and whatever you we make your blade spin you can either mash or just pause between attacks and then it's going to trigger it's going to trigger but um i think the best way to do that if you're really fast you want to quickly mash triangle to 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 make to set your blades on fire and then I think R2, using R2 is the best thing to do when it comes to the triangle attack with your blade. It, had, it, had, it has a wider area of impact and it deals so much damage. Oh my, you can't even imagine how much damage it deals because we also have the increase in the damage our triangle attack deals. It is insane. Like That's what I said, that when it comes to the axe and the blade, they deal a lot of damage when it comes to the the spear it's just about throwing those spears and then holding triangle to 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 make them explode so it's kind of lame but it's fine because again the most important thing when it comes to the this build is not the axe or the or the blades or the spear it's just about how to make them work faster but the important part here is that the cooldown but behind the scenes we get the cooldown so much faster than before then you can just go in 
spin your blades, hit the opponent, and then your blades is already back. Your, your link attack is already back, ready to also be used. And by the time you do that, if you're lucky, sometimes I was really lucky, I was pumping my attacks every three seconds. Imagine every three seconds. That's insane. That's insane. And when it comes to drop near, just keep in mind that you get a buff in damage whenever you throw your spears and also when you detonate them. It's very good to deal with those enemies running around a lot like this guy. This fucking guy. I hate this guy. So listen, this build was already doing great with you being able to use your runic attacks every so often, sometimes being very lucky and using them every 3 seconds. And to add to that, the damage you deal with your awakened weapons, that was just mwah. But also to push it to the next level, because we had to, using the by first turn. Because guess what? Because, I said because a lot, but listen, <laughs> because we get our Brunic attacks so fast, why not make something out of them? That was my thought process. I was, I was like, I get so many attacks, so, so like my cooldown so, the down so fast, why not do something with that? And I used the Bifrost Dumb. And that thing is disgusting because now we were already dealing a disgusting amount of damage, but now we deal even more because Bifrost, if you don't know, is going to, is going to take some life out of the opponent's health bar, but until you hit them, it's not going to actually decrease the health bar. So imagine them, because the storm lasts for 30, I mean 13 seconds or 14 seconds, that's a long time, and if the longer they stay within that field where the frost, I mean where the storm is actually doing the work, the more damage you're going to take when you eventually hit them. That's why this build is crazy because we 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 have we have running attacks for days. We can spam them. So why not spam them? Actually make something out of them. That was in, that's in, I just love this game for the fact that you can get that much creative. I just love it. <laughs> And I think I forgot to mention that you actually get a buff in defense and stagger resistance whenever you awaken your your weapon. Mostly the axe, I think. So yeah, this build is really good and chances are it shines the most in a 1v1 situation but it's also going to shine in all the situations because you get your running attacks so fast that you can stagger multiple enemies at once using um, those attacks. Which is really good because you do know that some bosses in this game, they run around a lot and sometimes the only way to pin them down is to use an attack so that you can for 5 seconds maybe get some hit in. It is super annoying and yeah, I did use I did use uh, the Storm of Bifrost with the Berserker outfit to go against Gna and I can tell you, I can tell you that the Frost, I mean the, the Storm, it is super powerful. Honestly, don't sleep on it. It is super powerful and I saw, I, I had the enchantment for a while, but I, I was... I don't like using my attacks, my runic attacks recklessly because you do want to save them for to <laughs> to make them relevant since the bosses run around a lot and a lot and chances are if you do use your attacks recklessly they're going to punish you because they can ignore the stagger and hit you even sometimes kill you whenever you are using your attacks so being able to just summon the the, the storm and then go 
like uh, in close quarter combat and deal significant damage is amazing it is just amazing and i do want you to try this build and tell me what you think about it for me personally i love it i really really love it especially because it gets there's just so many layers the fact that you can get so much buff on so many levels the, um, whenever you throw your weapon, whenever you awaken your weapon, whenever you have enemies caught in your storm, and also the fact that you get your cooldowns back so fast, which also applies to your relic. And using the sort of scuffnan, you can get it back sometimes within 10 seconds. That's powerful. I can't wait for New Game Plus, and I can't wait to hear from you. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, and don't sleep on the storm. Winter is coming.